The plot of Rosemary's Baby follows the plight of a modern young woman as she falls prey to a satanic cult that conspires with her sad, sorry excuse of a husband to impregnate her with a devil's son, all the while living in the most fabulous apartment. Never has New York City living seemed so desirable and yet so frightening at the same time. And the film is very much wedded to its New York location and this building, the Dakota. A very New York building. But when you think of the film, it's impossible to not picture the Dakota, the apartment building that young couple Guy and Rosemary Woodhouse think will be their perfect home. Built between 1880 and 1884, when much of Manhattan was still farmland, the Dakota was New York's first luxury apartment building. The story goes it was named the Dakota because its location was so far away from the Tony downtown mansions of the rich, it might as well have been in the Dakota territories. And over the years, tenants have included Judy Garland, Roberta Flack, Jack Lemon, and John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And in 1969, the Dakota became the stand-in for the Bramford, the name given to the fictional apartment building in Ira Levin's book, Rosemary's Baby, and the later film version directed by Roman Polanski starring Mia Farrow and John Cassavetes. Rosemary and John Woodhouse think that this is going to be their dream home, but later it turns into an absolute nightmare. The film crew was given permission to film around the building's exteriors and in its famous courtyard, but were forbidden to film inside. Production designer Richard Silbert, who was friends with Dakota resident Lauren Bacall, sketched the floor plan of her three-bed, three-and-a-half bath home, then rebuilt it in Hollywood, including the 13-foot ceilings. And you can be forgiven for not knowing this was a Hollywood studio set because Silbert brought the apartment so authentically to life, you really believed that this unit would be in that building. The set felt so much like a real living space with working lights, running water, plum fixtures, a wood-burning fireplace, and a working stove that Mia Farrow actually spent some nights there. And you really believe that this is Rosemary and Guy's dream come true. Rosemary even begins redecorating the place in her mind before they've actually even signed the lease. Guy, let's take it, please. That living room could be... Oh, please, let's take it. But it's not as if they weren't warned. Things might not be as wonderful as they think. The Bramford had rather an unpleasant reputation around the turn of the century. Rosemary sweeps all that away and buries any suspicions she may have had as she gets rid of the old world decor and replaces it with new paint, new wallpaper, new rugs, lights, and furniture. From her open and minimal living room to the bright and sunny yellow of her kitchen and bedroom, it's a 60s modern aesthetic. Polanski told Silbert, let's make them think we're doing a Doris Day movie, and the place has all that 60s showroom glamour to it. And it's all so perfectly normal. A young couple, a new apartment, the homemaking wife, and the career-driven husband. This couple could be any couple. It's all so ordinary. Until it isn't. Polanski said he wanted the apartment to be another character in the story. He wanted it to always be overwhelming Rosemary, to have it even curve so the walls were enveloping her. And we begin to feel the apartment swallowing her. It does overwhelm her, then it traps her. And next door, at the Castavet's apartment, with its more traditional decor, there are secrets and lies, and plans for betrayal of the highest order an ancient evil laying in wait for the perfect victim. Because sometimes the most dangerous place is the place you lay your head. We're your friends, Rosemary. There's nothing to be afraid of, Rosemary. Honest and truly, there isn't. There's eight million stories in the cinema cities. This has been one. <laughs>